Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to be working on this mother-daughter Boonjin Juniper and um, one of the things that separates a really good bonsai from just sort of a mediocre one is addressing all of the weird structural issues that are hidden inside of a silhouette. So this already has a relatively nice silhouette to it and a pretty good feeling in terms of the flow but there's quite a few problems that we're going to address today as part of this restyling and sort of update of the tree. Let me give this a little bit of a not a complete spin. Well, I'll give it a complete spin for you guys. So I've got it propped up here because it had some health issues a couple years ago. And so it was put into this larger container and the angle uh, isn't quite right for the styling. So it's, uh, if I turn it to the side here, you can see that it's propped up and angled forward uh, to what should be the approximate angle for the final styling and this should go back into a smaller round container most likely um, this winter once the styling is complete since the tree is is now healthy again um, so it has a, a really nice relationship between the main crown up here and this lower crown with a nice descending branch here but some of the issues that the tree has are sort of hidden on the inside. The one of uh, the first one, if you start from the bottom up, is that this branch kind of comes off directly pointing towards the secondary trunk in the composition. And then it makes this weird bend uh, towards the back. And ultimately it creates a lot of depth for the composition when you're looking at the composition from the front. But this awkward sort of structure that's visible right here from the front uh, is crowding the, it's kind of impinging on the space that we need between the two trunks right here. So I'm going to look at solutions for how to reduce or even eliminate that, uh, depending on how much of it I need to keep for depth purposes. Then the second problem is that this side of the main crown is made up of two uh, relatively large branches, one here and one here that are stacked right on top of each other. And the branches are really a little bit too, too big compared to the trunk, which in and to itself maybe is not the, the biggest issue, but the fact that the movement, uh, especially of this top one coming out of the trunk is kind of awkward as well, is something that I would like to address. And then this one, because this has been stacked on top of it, has no branching that's in closer to the trunk. So it'll be a tough choice to, between these two if I end up having to eliminate one or the other, which would ideally happen, uh, which one is gonna actually stay and which one is going to go. If I eliminate this one, I'm eliminating a lot of this close in tight foliage. And if I eliminate this one, I'm eliminating the one that actually has a nicer feeling to it. Uh, and then ultimately I might not have as much foliage down low as far as I want to go. Uh, in the back here and on this side, we have another branch that's awkwardly split. The, the structure of these two branches is really not very attractive. And then as we get up into the crown of the tree, there's quite a few just sort of weird things going on. Uh, it's, not aw it's not that odd, but I'm gonna look at how to reduce some of the structure that's in here to better accentuate uh, some movement. And maybe, you know, I'm gonna be looking at how do I separate these little clouds into a more pleasing pattern so that it's not just a big mass of foliage. In this process that I've been starting here, while I do the early work on clearing out some of the old foliage, I'm actually doing a few different things all at once. 
And um, you know, the primary thing that you're gonna see visually is just that I'm pulling off weak old pieces of growth. I'm pulling off like small clumps of needles off the tree that are not needed, stuff that's dangling down. Um, I'm thinning out some of the clumpy kind of areas. And at the same time, the, the other critical thing that I'm doing is I'm analyzing the structure of each branch and looking at how the branch junctions come together, uh, where the foliage pads are coming from and, and going to. And that allows me to sort of more intelligently look at what I'm gonna do to optimize the, the structure of the plant. Because ultimately, we, in an initial styling, can kind of cheat a little bit and we can move you know a branch maybe that is coming off of somewhere that's not ideal and put it into a position to create a foliage pad that we want but in the long term that doesn't really get us anywhere it's sort of like a, a stopgap measure and so in the long term we're looking to correct all of those structural issues because as a bonsai artist we are interested in all of the aspects of the plant not just in the raw visual of the silhouette or in you know getting the branch pads to look the perfect um, and so if we can both get the branch pads to look perfect and have the structure that's supporting them be really elegant looking in the end that is a much better composition than just having the branch pads so that's what i'm kind of doing i'm looking at these looking at these structures and thinking to myself well, like, okay, you know, maybe this center portion of this branch is too big and I'm gonna eliminate that in favor of the two port, the two side branches that are there. There's also a junction here that actually has five branches coming out, uh, forming all of this, all of this foliage. So I'm definitely gonna remove some of those because it's actually sort of starting to create a bulge. And I just, as part of the, as part of the process of clearing out the old foliage and and <clears throat> getting familiar with the structure look at that but then set it aside while i continue to go through the different branches and pull off uh, pull off foliage that's either in the way for the purposes of wiring or that is ultimately not going to grow so anything that's been impacted by uh, insects like scale and has gotten weak or has been shaded too much and you can kind of tell the foliage that's been shaded too much on these uh, shimpaku and kishu, it tends to have sort of a grayish look rather than a bright green look. Um, and there might be a couple of bright green tips on it, but the, the foliage on the whole is kind of weak looking. It also tends to be a little bit less dense. And so you're taking that foliage off because ultimately the tree is probably not supposed it's not getting more from that foliage than uh, the, the energy that it takes to support the, the foliage. So removing it can actually stimulate better growth. Uh, and as part of this process, you're, you're doing, like I said, multiple things at once. gone through and cleaned up pretty much all of the excess foliage that was on the plant and now I can see uh, the entire structure of the plant relatively easily as I give it a spin here and that's going to allow me to go through and do the next phase of this whole thing which is looking at which branches I want to keep and which branches I want to eliminate. Now <clears throat> there's a couple different things that I want to take into account here. And one of them is that uh, as a, as a Bunjin style tree, we have a long-term goal with this type of composition to maintain the trunk in as small a state as possible. In other words, we don't want it to make a lot of more wood. And the more foliage that we leave on the plant, the more quickly it is going to make more wood. So one of my first teachers said to me one time when he was showing me a pine tree that he had been growing for 30 years, he said, do you think it's easy to keep a pine trunk that small for 30 years? And that has always stuck with me because it's something that I've seen happen 
with bunjin trees where over the course of a five or ten year period with significant amounts of foliage left that the trunk will actually significantly increase in size to the detriment of the composition. So that's one thing I want to take into account with this tree and then the other is that I just want to be able to optimize um, the amount of primary branches. We want to have an elegant structure and we want to have the minimum number of branches and foliage pads that we need in order to accomplish that. So I need to, now that I can see the structure, I need to spend some time studying it so that I can arrive at the best solution for the next stage of the tree's life. I've identified most of the cuts after studying the tree for a few minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a couple of them. So probably the easiest one to see here is this branch because it's des it's descending and this all of this foliage is on one uh, one branch. But what we have here is a junction where there's one, two, three, four, five things. And from the front, most of those are not super important and we've got this uh, we've got this guy from just above that junction that's actually doing pretty much the same thing as a bunch of the other branches. So I'm going to go ahead and remove a bunch of these branches in, in favor of basically just reducing the overall amount of foliage that's on the plant. So that lightens that up a little bit and I have a few more to go. All right, I've, I've cut most of the major wire off of this and this is actually a really nice looking branch, but the problem is that there's two branches stacked right on top of each other and this back branch and this branch are coming off, off the trunk right opposite each other and it looks kind of awkward when you're actually looking at the structure. So I'm gonna eliminate this entire branch. I'll leave just like a little stub of a branch here and that's gonna eliminate a bunch of this foliage, but what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on this branch that's just above it. I'm gonna bring that down to kind of take its place and edit the structure of that one a little bit as well. That is all the major branches that I plan to cut for today and uh, the point of those being to correct structural flaws as much as I care to in a given setting and prepare myself for the next time I work on the tree in terms of correcting structural flaws. All right, well, that's pretty much it for the, this session in terms of wiring and trimming. Uh, hopefully, I have accomplished what I set out to do. Let me give this a little bit of a quick sort of back and forth. Uh, if nothing else, the tree has a much cleaner look and uh, a little bit more of the directionality that uh, I was hoping to bring out. That was already all there in the trunk, but it's really nice to see the branches sort of accentuating it. And um, it, it, really, it really helps to be able to see all of those fine branches rather than just having sort of a, a, big, a big mop of foliage. So this will be back out to grow for a little while uh, and then it'll probably be about its, its best. I think that, you know, a few months after any styling and you get to see that, uh, that sort of evening out of the foliage and that really uh, accentuates the work that's been done. I'm really happy with uh, the sort of simplifications that I was able to incorporate into the tree and the reduction in the amount of foliage. And um, hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, a look into some Bunjin aesthetics. Thanks everyone.